Uh, I am Peter van Hurston from the South African National Bioinformatics Institute, um, and welcome to a short talk on short variant discovery in mycobacterium tuberculosis. So, yeah, 2018 figures, about 10 million cases worldwide, 1.4 million deaths from tuberculosis. Before the coronavirus pandemic, this was the world's deadliest infectious disease. The reference strain H37RV is a laboratory strain which was isolated in the 1930s uh, from a sample that was collected in the early part of the 20th century. About a quarter of the proteins annotated in the H37RV reference genome are listed as hypothetical. There is other annotation but it's not incorporated into the standard reference for what the function of these genes is. Uh, it's a slow growing bacteria, it only doubles about once a day. And there's no horizontal gene transfer in, in tuberculosis. In fact, it seems to use the mechanism that otherwise would be used for horizontal gene transfer as part of its uh, arsenal of weaponry against the human immune system. In the genus Mycobacteria, in the group Mycobacteria tuberculosis complex, we'll hear a little bit more about that now. The mycobacteria are a diverse genus of pathogenic and non-pathogenic uh, bacteria. The non-tubular mycobacteria are all of those except the ones that cause TB and lep uh, leprosy. So leprosy is even slower growing um, bacterium, but a reasonably close relative of mycobacterium tuberculosis. The non-tubular mycobacteria are found in soil and water, and they do occasionally cause human disease, but they don't tend to spread from one human to another. Mycobacterium tuberculosis itself uh, is a complex of, well, in this diagram, it was seven lineages. There are now eight recognized and a ninth has been proposed. Um, and this complex also includes some of the animal tuberculosis bacteria like uh, Mycobacterium bovis, um, Mycobacterium pinnipedi, and so on and so forth. But the modern tubercular um, uh, mycobacteria are these ones, lineages two, three, four, one, and seven. The differences here are largely due to so-called regions of deletion. Uh, the genome of Mycobacterium tuberculosis is a single 4.4 megabase circular chromosome. In the reference genome in C00962.3, there are 4,018 coding sequences, 56 insertion sequence sites, that would be important over a while, and there's a so-called direct repeat region of 36 base pair repeats with some spaces that are not repetitive between them. And it contains the PE, PPE, PTRS family of repetitive proteins. So here is the Mycobacterium tuberculosis genome. Here we can see um, some of the insertion sequence sites are marked, they're all around the genome. And here is the direct repeat region. And uh, the PE, uh, PPE, PGRS genes are also noted in this diagram. So how can we genotype mycobacterium tuberculosis? The one way to do it is to use one of the insertion sequences that is characteristic of mycobacterium tuberculosis, the IS6110, um, and use a technique called restriction fragment length uh, polymorphism to essentially count how many uh, of these insertion sequences you're seeing in a sample. Uh, then there is a variable number of tandem repeats um, method called MIRU. And often these two um, methods are used in tandem to try and genotype a sample. And then there is something called spoligotyping or space oligotyping. Remember I said that there's this direct repeat region now those have spaces between the direct repeats that uh, have a characteristic um, genomic pattern and spoligotyping tries to identify a sample of mycobacterium tuberculosis using those spaces. 
um, there's a nice review article that I linked to there. Uh, now, strains decades or even hundreds of years apart in transmission can actually share a genotype. So this genotyping is not terribly high resolution. So that brings us to whole genome sequencing. The advantages of whole genome sequencing is that we can infer transmission and to some degree genome allele flow. There's no clear SNP threshold though to say whether two sequences um, that are a certain number of SNPs apart are one transmission event. There's a lot of debate within the literature as to uh, the relationship between SNP distance and transmission. But we can generally rule out um, whether two sequences are from the same cluster much more easily than we can rule in sequences. Um, also, obviously, with whole genome sequencing, uh, that's necessary if we want to use GWAS to explore genotype or phenotype links. And very important is that we can use whole genome sequencing to perform in silico drug resistance testing. Uh, in a way that sometimes is actually more accurate and sometimes less accurate than phenotypic um, drug resistance testing or drug susceptibility testing, DST as it's sometimes known. Um, why is Mycobacterium tuberculosis somewhat easier to analyze than some other bacteria? As I mentioned previously, there is no horizontal gene transfer and recombination which is common in many other pathogen bacteria. Uh, so that would complicate bacterial phylogenies um, and you have to identify and mask recombination hotspots when you are computing uh, phylogenies of um, bacteria that do have these features. Um, and uh, when you have bacteria which are um, swapping around genes and plasmids and things like that, then you really have to analyze not just the phylogeny, but also the flow of genes in uh, a horizontal transfer. Something like uh, Klebsiella pneumonia is um, very susceptible to um, swapping uh, antibiotic resistant um, plasmids this way. And because of the diversity in many bacterial species, for instance, um, E. coli, it's difficult to use a single reference sequence for all the species because you can't map all the reads to a single reference when the um, different uh, parts of the species are so different from each other. Uh, and antimicrobial resistance in some other um, pathogen, bac pathogenic bacteria is typically on the level of genes, not point mutations like we see in Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Um, so there's some challenges in variant discovery on mycobacterium tuberculosis. The first one is your typical Illumina read is less than 250 base pairs, which limits your ability to discover insertions and deletions, um, especially if they start getting bigger. Um, and uh, definitely structural rearrangements are more difficult to find because the reads are quite short. Also, the reads are shorter than the length of the repetitive structures. Uh, for instance, insertion sequences or the PE, PPE, PGRS genes, so that means, means that those repetitive regions are more difficult to characterize with short read sequencing. And uh, the H737 RV genome is not a neutral target. It's a lineage 4 genome. The lab isolate was separated out in the 1930s. The original patient was in 1905. Um, and there are some significant differences in the EZ6 system in hd 7 rv is um, different to many clinical strains. And it also has a RVD5 deletion relative to many other clinical strains. So what we might actually be seeing in patients is not in some ways hd 7 rv it's, it's quite different. And um, as I mentioned, it's a lineage four, which means it's not um, neutral when it comes to its position within the diversity of um, mycobacterium tuberculosis. So this um, uh, diagram uh, from uh, in Ike Comas's lab is quite uh, useful for one of the preprints. Uh, so if you align um, different lineages to HZ7RV, then the number of SNPs that you get is lineage um, dependent. So 
you'll see a certain number of SNPs from lineage 4, specifically 4.10, which is where HC7 RV fits, there will be fewer SNPs. But if you're taking something like lineage 1, it's further away in the phylogenetic tree from uh, HC7 RV. Um, however, uh, in Archicomus and uh, um, co authors uh, developed an inferred um, ancestral genome, which is neutral with regards to these different lineages, largely. Uh, it's the same length as XC7RV, but it just has single nucleotide polymorphisms inserted to try and uh, approximate what we think the common ancestor um, of these lineages looked like. So that it is available um, on uh, Zenodo at the moment. Um, yeah, getting into further challenges. So contamination of MTB samples is common, especially in direct from sputum sampling. Um, taxonomic filtering is recommended prior to variant analysis. Uh, so that means trying to actually see if the reads that you're lo looking at are actually um, mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, reads. However, the commonly used tools for this, Kraken and Kraken 2, are very memory intensive. Um, centrifuge is another similar tool that is less memory intensive, but uh, the question of whether it's sensitive enough is, is still being investigated. Um, of course, most uh, uh, variant coding software and a lot of bioinformatics is tuned for human data. Um, its uh, accuracy might not be as good as it could be if more effort was put into bacterial variant calling. Um, and different groups differ as to which regions they, sh they think should be masked out uh, in terms of where the repetitive regions are. It's the open question of the correct mask for the mycobacterium tuberculosis genome. It's a nice overview in the link that I provided over there. Just to illustrate what's uh, difficult about the PEPPE PGRS genes, uh, uh, this is a graph where each edge shows that there's greater than 70% identity. Uh, this is using alignment with BLAST. So you see that there's this cluster of very, very similar genes. So that means that a read from one of these genomic regions might map to any of the other um, uh, genomic regions from uh, one of the genes that will just throw your mapping off quite substantially. Um, and also around uh, insertion sequences. This is around the IS6110 insertion sequence. I took reads from exactly the same genome. Um, and uh, in other words, the XD7RV reference and mapped them back to the genome. And this colorful display here shows how um, the positional mapping goes wrong around this um, IS6110 region. Um, so yeah, so repetitive DNA is a problem. And we're hoping that long read sequencing will solve that from uh, with technologies from Pacific Biosciences and Oxford Nanopore. Uh, but these reads are still quite noisy. Um, the error rate for long reads is high, but much less with um, some of the newer uh, PAC bio sequences. Um, and with uh, Nanopore, the error rate has dropped from about 20% to under 5% in five years. So we're hoping in a few years time, we'll be able to use long reads. Unfortunately, there's one characteristic error that uh, we find, especially with a nanopore, which is that the homopolymer errors, that is for instance, changing from GG to GGG, they are still cropping up even in the newer um, nanopore technology that I've seen. Uh, and um, the methods of DNA extraction uh, are well studied when it comes to short read sequencing, but are still more challenging when it comes to um, long read sequencing, especially with nanopore. You really want long stretches of DNA, but mycobacterium tuberculosis, um, the cell wall is quite tough and it's quite tough to kind of break in that cell apart and get good long um, DNA out of it. Um, if you have both long and short read technologies, they allow for rapid de novo genome assembly and uh, thereby investigating um, 
uh, clusters with very high resolution because you can actually build a, a, a outbreak cluster um, genome. Um, some bioinformatics tools which uh, are described in also in the tutorial we have for Galaxy. Um, TB variant filter allows you to uh, apply common filtering operations to predicted variants. So once you've predicted some variants, then you don't need to go look up where are the PE, PPE regions. TB variant filter will apply those filters for you. Um, then from Sanbi, we've created a tool called TBVCF report, which annotates each variant with links back into the Combat TB NeoDB uh, database so that you can um, learn more about the genes that um, have been annotated um, uh, in your uh, uh, the, the, in the variants that, that you've um, identified. And finally, um, Galaxy also has a wrapper for TB Profiler, which is a drug resistance and lineage prediction tool uh, from Jody Phelan at the London School for Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. There are other tools for um, drug resistance prediction, um, but uh, this is one that's easy to use and is available on um, Galaxy servers such as usegalaxy.eu. I have to acknowledge some people who gave me amazing insights for writing these slides. Uh, Inaki Komas, who I uh, mentioned previously, worked on the ancestral inferred ancestral reference genome, and his group has worked on contamination in samples. Connor Meehan, who is an all round um, expert on microbacteria, tuberculosis, bioinformatics, and uh, is an amazing tweeter. Um, just really helpful. Um, Carolyn Collins' uh, work on transmission modeling in mycobacterium tuberculosis and TB. Um, Jody Phelan for TB profiler. And then the combat TB group at Sanbi, that is Toba Lose and Zibozake Mashalogo. And uh, Torsten Seaman, who is a powerhouse of um, microbial bioinformatics um, and helped comment on these slides and wrote Snippy and Shovel and so many other tools and the South African National Research Foundation and the Medical Research Council that fund our work at Zambi. And I'm sure I've missed off some people. Thank you very much.